you're now tuning in to the Ambitious Views podcast, where we share unique perspectives on storytelling within film and television from the past, present, and future. We're here for a good time, not a long time. So let's get to it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ambitious Views podcast. I'm your host, Corgan, and this is my great co-host, Blaze, what's up? How you been doing, Corgan? Tired. Mm-hmm. Tired. Oh, I get that. Yeah, close to the end of the semester. Mm-hmm. Um, knocking out grading, finishing up big events. We got a big one honoring our students tomorrow evening. So we got that going on. And mm-hmm. uh, then we got kind of more of the fun stuff after that besides another big mm-hmm. event. Uh, which is kind of closing out like a fun event for the students, like a cook, big cookout. Um, but uh, besides that, in pre-production for the second season of my web web series. Come on, and, second season? You know, yeah, and as usual, you know, that's um, giving me a run for my money because it's this one is going to be even bigger as far as like the type of stories and settings and stuff like that. And then on mm-hmm. top of that, um, I have... Um, a lot more people on the cast that I'm trying to work with their schedule. So it's, it's a lot, but the main thing that's motivating me is like what the stories are. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And then, um, working on my first in pre-production, working on my first, um, feature documentary, uh, well, documentary that's a feature length, uh, film. So, um, just taking my time with that, but, you know, really, 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 really hoping that um, we can have most of it done at least close to the end of the year. I would love to have a screening close to the end of the year, um, mainly um, private-ish screening so we can go again and film festivals and stuff like that um, and mm-hmm. stuff. So, but yeah, other than that, um, just just trying to survive. What, the, what you been having going on? Uh, Work. School. Yesterday, I had my first orientation for the summer semester, um, so that went well. Okay. We, I, tr- I tried to do like um like a degree specific orientation, and so it's our mm-hmm. first time doing one of those, and mm-hmm. it went pretty well. There, there are course of things that like I want to change and improve on, but for the most part, I liked, I liked what students were able to get out mm-hmm. of it. So I'm excited to do that with other degrees. Mm-hmm. Um, I finished writing a book, and so I'm reading mm-hmm. through it now, and so I can edit it and all that good stuff. Woo-woo. Is it a fiction? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's fiction. I don't do nonfiction. <laughs> <laughs> I I do I don't like do I am. I barely even read it to be honest. Like the most yeah. nonfiction that I read is for class. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah, and see, I'm totally opposite. Like it's hard. I say it's hard, but you know, it's a specific book because I don't want to say it because I do. I don't want to be like, don't read it. But like for <laughs> me, um, this is one book I really want to get into because it got picked up by Netflix. And um, somebody from Arkansas um, wrote it and uh, stuff like that. But I know it's good. Yeah, I know it's good and stuff like that. But it's like I tried reading it. It was like a few months back. I tried reading the first one because I got either I just got it for herself or I went on and bought the first one on my own for us to read. And she already knocked out the first one and liked it. I want to know what you want. What book you talking about? I'll tell you. <laughs> I want to know, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, man, like I, you know, I'm trying to get into it, and like within the first chapter, I was just getting sleepy, and that's always been my dilemma with reading. You gotta but get when, past the first chapter. Yeah, but I mean, it's not the book; it's me. I think it's just hard for me to get caught up in fiction novels for some reason. But I'm gonna keep on trying. That's interesting, since you know you like. Tele- yes television and film so much um have you ever tried doing audio books i think there's one i'm going to try um because I, I really want to get into it it's just way easier for me to read 
nonfiction things, you know, things about people's lives or situations no, I don't care that much. like that. <laughs> like I only care to read like about people's lives if I care about that person enough. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, like I would rather watch a documentary on them, and and I would have to watch it like as soon as it came out. Yeah. I wouldn't just randomly sit up one day and be like, "Ooh, let me look at this doc." I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel you. Um. You know, I, I don't know. I feel you. Um, I'm going to try to push through. I think, I think I don't know. I'm just at a point in my life that I, I do feel like it's time for me to shift some things to where my mind is a little bit more calm to receive things better. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel like I just really have so many things that I am balancing between my filmmaking career, higher ed stuff, um, you know, just the hustle and bustle and stuff like that. And so, I don't know, like, I think, you know, that's why I'm at a point now where it's like, you know, I really want to push through with the series and a documentary this year and just give myself time to just not have to, unless a great opportunity comes, of course, I'm not going to turn it down, but just, I can write, but outside of writing, just relax, let my work just be out there, marinate in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, and just relax my mind and just, it's like, I do feel like I enjoy life, but I don't feel like I'm able to enjoy it as much because most of the time I'm planning mm -hmm. opportunities around my PTO or whatever like that yeah. as opposed to fully for me to a certain degree. So No, I understand that, especially like this semester that has been hard for me. Like the classes themselves haven't been very difficult, but I'm like, okay, I know I'm close to the end, but then I'm also thinking man i can't do nothing because i have to do school and if i'm not doing school i'm doing something for work and if i'm not doing like so i get what you mean about like not really feeling like you're living right now because you got so many other things that you're trying to take care yeah. of yeah you know and you know for any creatives out there or honestly any entrepreneurs out there that's listening i mean you know I feel like they kind of understand where we're coming from when you're take, taking out the time to do anything, whether it's going to school, building a business, creating things like like it's hard to balance investing in yourself and then also mm -hmm. allowing yourself to do so. But I mean, we have to. That's a part of life um, because I do feel like it's a part of, you know, just good balance mentally, you know, so we can't even perform at our best in these spaces, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, but I mean, at least I'm doing what I love, especially on the film side and stuff like that. I mean, when it comes to my students, man, them, man, them coming back, tell me that they got an internship or they overcame a class or, you know, I'm hiring the next peer mentors for the scholarship program I'm over and they really taking it serious and asking me questions about the next year. Um, and me interviewing for, you know, more, more student workers and stuff like that. I mean, that puts a smile on my face. You know, like I tell mm -hmm. people all the time, man, if I ended up just literally being on the scholarship program that I'm over all the way up until I go into filmmaking, um, you know, as long as it's, you know, feasibly fulfilling for me and my family, um, mm -hmm. I, I can do that for a long time, um, you know. So because and I think it's just one of those things I just truly love giving into people and supporting people on their journeys is just fulfilling for me um mm -hmm. as well and I, and I just love seeing elevations in people's lives and me being able to help people because mm -hmm. I mean that's help is a part of people's lives no matter what people yeah. say helping is a part of life if you're not mm -hmm. receiving help you must help you must be super blessed in ways that you don't really need as much or you don't realize but you should be helping other people yes yes or you should be helping other people you know mm -hmm. exactly so but yeah, man, but it's all good. I'm glad to be back on another episode uh, with you, Blaze. We got a great one today. We're talking about the A24 film. I believe it's their first blockbuster, Civil War. Not to be mistaken with <laughs> the Avengers. The movie. Avengers. Yeah, or, or Captain or, America. Or, or not to be mistaken with the current rap war that's going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's wild out here. So we're talking about Civil War. War, the A24 film, which was a pretty dope film, original take 
on um, some really, a uh, really unique time in America. So a fictional uh, approach to that. So, but of course, before we get into that, we got to get into this or that. And today is Sister Blaze's turn and I'm ready to see what she got on the table today. All right. So when I went to the movies and I saw the previews before Civil War came on, there was a preview for a new movie called Twisters about mm -hmm. um, like storm chasers, people who take chase mm -hmm. tornadoes and everything. Mm -hmm. And so, Corgan, I got to ask you, would you rather be a storm chaser or a military journalist photographer? Blaze, like, do you got something against me or something? Like, what's <laughs> what's going on here? You know, uh, I want to know, like, what what where your daredevil side at? I'm gonna say storm chaser. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say storm chaser just because, like, they chase them and they keeping up with them. But I do feel like there is a way like it's way safer to approach to doing that mm -hmm. with skill driving, not putting yourself in harm's way skill driving, but just knowing how close to get, keeping up with things or whatever like that, as opposed to basically you never know where you're gonna get popped. You yeah. Know? yeah. Uh so I I would definitely say that I would roll with being a storm chaser, even though um it's crazy like when i was younger whenever i used to see stuff on the tv talking about a tornado or something like that and that store hitting outside ooh, mm -hmm. wee. i was the only kid in the house my mind racing like storms truly used to terrify me especially any chance of a tornado so i for me to even say that it just shows like that's literally mm -hmm. that that's all i can roll with that's all i'm gonna roll with but um but yeah, man, I just I just can't do that. I mean, it's very it's very cool in an unfortunate way because you know for things to be resolved, you don't want anybody to go to war. But for journalists to get the footage and content that they get, you know, especially way back in the day and stuff like that, is is very a very cool and unique skill and mindset to be able to do. I I will say to a certain degree in a sense, I kind of admire that. And mm -hmm. it almost kind of it almost kind of remind me of the uh, documentary called "A Weapon of Choice." Um, I can't remember the filmmaker right now, but basically, he was the first black filmmaker to get a uh, deal and direct a film for Warner Brothers. Probably any mm -hmm. major film, but a major uh, film. I can't think of his name right now, but um, but anyway, yeah, I I take the I take the twist. Yeah, I'm glad that was your this or that because I don't know what my answer would be. <laughs> <laughs> because like I'm scared of storms too. I feel like it's easier to die with that. But with the um military photojournalist, like, like you almost have to turn off like your humanity. And I, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about it later when we talk about the movie. But like, yeah, I I know I could do it, but it's when you're, it's like when you're at home and mm -hmm. you're thinking about the day or you're thinking about your last assignment. It's like, that's what I would be worried about. How yeah. that would mess with me mentally, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I see the, I see the value in it and like the ability to capture history, essentially. Yes. So, I don't know. No, I mean, most definitely. Um, yeah, you, you picked a tough woman. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I was for you. <laughs> oh, man. What's on your watch list? So, to be honest, haven't been watching very much. I, actually, I've been doing a little bit of rewatching. I've been rewatching like some old shows that I've watched in the past. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, in terms of new things or new seasons that I've been watching, um, you know, I I think it's ID. They have been doing the Quiet on Set documentary about mm -hmm. 
um, child stars, specifically in Nickelodeon, um, and just some of like the horrible things that they had to experience. Yes. Um, on those sets, and so I I watched it, but like I didn't watch it. If that makes sense. Um, okay. I had went on a conference for my job, and you know how hotel TVs are. They don't have that many channels. Uh -uh. And so it was on one, one, one channel. And so I, I, I started watching it before I went to bed. And so I saw like maybe two full episodes and then bits and pieces of some other episodes. So like I can get yeah. the general um, synopsis of like what everything was going on and what it was about. But mm -hmm. I think they're also producing more episodes if they haven't already. Um, yeah, I I watched them all except for like the recent one where I guess it was like they were interviewing a couple of them or something. So mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you what do you think about it? About the series? Mm-hmm. You know, besides the obvious, I, I will say I find it very I think the hard part for me that's I kind of be in between is like producing something that's bringing light to what somebody has done to others mm -hmm. after things have been resolved. Mm -hmm. um, resolved in the sense of like, you know, if it was something that needed to go to court, it's went to court, all this stuff like that. But if you also, but if it's coming from a, a thing of like, but this these people are still able to do whatever and be almost in the same situations as they were before they got in trouble because of their privilege. Then I understand the motivation behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, for me, I mean, I, I just feel like it's a difference between this project and when they see us, um, mm -hmm. people that were associated with, um, the exonerated five and what they accused them of or whatever they went on, we, they went along, they went on scot-free. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And and it wasn't until that project came out to where people were held accountable for what they did to them. And even when they did the um, Q&A with them, you can definitely tell that people were still, hurt, the men were still hurt from that. Some mm -hmm. more than others, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, and I think a documentary came out way back in the day and I still got to watch it, but I think Ken Burns produced it. I mean, you know, the fact that people still wasn't fully aware of what happened and mm -hmm. and how big of an impact that series was when Ava DuVernay produced it. You know, I feel like that just shows the importance of it. But I, I think in my filmmaking mind, I think it's just, it's, it's a thin line between something like, you know, if you're going to produce something about something that's done happened to people, why What's does it need to be... Yeah, like what? What's the goal of it? Do you feel like yeah. that because their story truly does need to be told, mm -hmm. um, and what has been done wasn't enough or whatever like that, mm -hmm. or do you just feel like this need to be told because this just need make, need to be made sure that it doesn't happen again mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that? Which we both know that you know the whole dilemma of child stardom. Um, has been a conversation for decades. I feel like especially around our generation when, mm -hmm. especially, I mean, I grew up, I I watched most of the shows, more so Amanda, the Amanda show and um, all that, maybe like the first couple seasons, definitely by the time uh, Kel and um, Keenan wasn't a part of it anymore. I wasn't really watching, watching that that much anymore. But, you know, I started going over into Disney but, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I I just think that it's important to bring these things up. But then I also hope that people will do it right and not just be doing it for clickbait, because now you have yes. people that was a part of the project mm -hmm. that's speaking now that said they wasn't even quite clear about what the project was about. Or, yeah, and I don't like, like that. You yeah, know, be, yeah, yeah. be clear on like, don't trick people. Because, like, people deserve that agency of if they want to be a part of it and if they want to share their story and their experience. And so to blindside people, that is a little um, mean or rude or whatever. Like, I get the purpose behind it because you're like, well, we heard this and we want this person to talk about it. But 
give them that agency because some people may not be ready. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah. it's like, yes, this information needs to be out there to expose what these people did so that they can't continue to work because they shouldn't be working with children again. Mm -hmm. um, but if somebody's not comfortable or ready to talk about it, you know, don't force them to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. I just, and, and I don't know. I mean, I doubt it, but I know for even for me as a filmmaker, sometimes what you set out to do ends up not being mm -hmm. what it ended up being or stuff like that. Some things kind of change. I think the most closest to what was on script that I produced was Freedom's House, my last short film. But other than that, something is always going to be something different. Something is going to be true. a little less. Yeah, it's either something less than what you expected or you have mm -hmm. to make adjustments. And I'm pretty sure that's the same way on their end when they're not as much in the independent space of like, well, we have a budget, we have a time schedule, we're trying to get it out. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I I don't know, man. It's you The know, biggest thing for me. Yeah. I was going to say, the biggest thing for me is that I've been trying to figure out why... Like the shows that were on Nickelodeon that I grew up watching, I was like, I love this show. And then in my adult age, like when they started being put on Netflix and Hulu and I rewatched them and I'm like, wait, this isn't funny. This isn't, you know. Yeah. And I was, and so for me watching a documentary, I was like, now, now it feels, now I get to see why I don't enjoy these shows in my adult age anymore because they really weren't for children. <laughs> Like it was mm -hmm. some just inappropriate jokes and just honestly, just jokes that were not funny, period. And yeah. it just made me think, cause I know you said that you were more of a Disney kid. I was more of a Disney kid, but I still watch a lot of Nickelodeon shows, but I feel like Disney shows, you know, people can call them corny if they want to, but I feel like they age well. Um, yes. In comparison to like Nickelodeon shows, like I can watch any, pretty much any Disney channel show and not be like, oh, you shouldn't have, like, you can't say that mm -hmm. today. But mm -hmm. the Nickelodeon shows, like, it's a lot of cringe stuff that I'm like, how did this even get made in the first place? Yeah, yeah. And and I would truly say it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, um, I think the issue is that it comes from raw comedy. Like, the approach was to come from a sketch uh, mindset. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like, you know, how in the world do you... I feel like the best, the not knocking anybody that can or cannot write or nothing like that, but it's like, I feel like the best way to write or do certain things, sometimes like maybe entertain, which I knew it would have been wild back in the day, but maybe have more kids or teenagers on set to actually do the sketch writing or to help out with yeah. things. Yeah. Um, uh, <clears> because, really you know, yeah, because I mean, I mean, sketch comedy is, is, is widely known as you know the bread and butter of Saturday Night Live. So mm -hmm. if you try and translate, yeah, and if you try to go from Saturday Night Live to all that to the Amanda Bynes show, mm -hmm. and just trying to make that work, you know, it's you know it's it's tough. And I only feel like the reason why we kind of watched this because we wasn't. I feel like we were raised on more physical comedy rather than actually what's coming out of people's mouths and mm -hmm. Nickelodeon took advantage of all that. You had the slime, you had people doing weird things. You had people like mm -hmm. getting ran over at times, you know, you had all these physical comedy things that was going on. And, and that's because we had Jim Carrey and, you know, Eddie Murphy at times that can be a little bit on the physical side, Marlon Wayans. Uh, it's so many of those things that we came up on. And now it's kind of, hard not even just for I guess like children's comedy you know wherever that is now to like or kids comedy too even now I feel like that's why it's so hard for people to be funny in comedy movies because I just that's that's hard you know it's like, so hard and it's I, hard I asked my brother that the other day I was like in the in the society we have today do we still really need like stand-up comedy specials because it's so hard to be a comedian mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. like and I'm not saying like, oh, they should be able to say whatever they want, but that's that was the culture of like stand up comedy, you know, yes. growing up was people said a lot of things that were really inappropriate. Yeah. So it's like, how do you do that today? Be funny, but not be corny, not step on anybody's toes. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And it's like, you know, budget wise, with all these streaming services and studios that rather invest in blockbusters, you know, mm -hmm. how can smaller budget films that are, you know, comedies, romantic comedies, you know, get made, you know, but I do also feel that it's just a shift in what people want. People want real stuff. People don't want the fantasy mm -hmm. stuff anymore. Yeah. They either want to learn. It's I feel like it's like the renaissance of documentaries. People want to learn, 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 learn. Mm -hmm. uh, people want to know the truth. That's why more biopics, I feel like, are getting, being greenlit lately. Um, and, and also in hindsight, I think that's why also now blockbuster stuff like some Avengers films and stuff like that are having a hard time because people are not buying much into the fantasy anymore mm -hmm. just because of life is just so real for all ages, including youth, which I feel like is unfortunate because I feel like their their youth their youth experiences yeah. are getting robbed, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think them. too, when it especially when it comes to like those superhero movies, is that they are struggling with writing these movies that tell a really good story, but also have of action for those, you know, diehard superhero fan movie mm -hmm. fans. Like I think they want to go more towards the just like script field and just like a really good story, but they mm -hmm. know they have to include these other elements. And so I feel like for some of these newer Marvel movies, if we took out the fact that it's a superhero movie and we just mm -hmm. said it's a drama, yeah, they would probably be received well, but because yeah. they're a superhero movie, that's why they haven't been able to do so well. Yeah. And I feel like that's why it's, it's, it's the gate is wide open for for DC to really mm -hmm. make a, a huge impact pretty dang soon. Yeah, because that's what um, they've always been doing. Yeah, DC. it's always been grounded. It's always yeah. been grounded. And so now, I mean, Peacemaker was a great series. Mm -hmm. um, getting ready to come out with Penguin pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, James Gunn and working on the Superman um, as well. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's get pretty good. I think, I think the true test is going to be how does, uh, Deadpool perform not money wise, cause it's going to make a lot of money, but mm -hmm. how, how will people receive it? The Are critics be, and stuff. Yeah. 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 Is it going to be like, yes, you know, glad to be back, stuff like that. Or mm -hmm. is it going to be one of those things where like, man, where does Disney turn next? Mm -hmm. You know, which, you know, I do feel that the title that they're entertaining and I'm super excited to see what they're going to be doing with it because I'm assuming it's, we're going to see way more X-Men. But X-Men it is the closest thing besides Spider-Man and like Blade. I know Daredevil is supposed to be. I never did get into the Daredevil series. Well, I'm, I'm going to really try. But um, X-Men is a ground level and it's relatable to a lot of yeah. people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so... But I'm gonna be honest. I don't want another X Men because I don't want them to pick new people. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. It eats me up too. Yeah, I, I need my OG people, and I know they they ain't coming back. So please yeah. leave X Men alone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless it's some type of way they're able to. I don't know what they would do, man. That's why I'm more so ready for this phase to reach close to the end of whatever is going to be. I don't know if they're going to try to bring back another Kane to conquer or what. But just where does this all lead to mm -hmm. for people to um to be interested to to buy in? But you know, we'll see. We, we will see. see. <laughs> so sorry for that tangent. <laughs> no, nah, you good. You put me on the spot, but I I, I tried to keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and then I also watched um WWE re release release recently released. Um, a new docu-series called WWE Next Gen, where basically they followed a group of um, college athletes, essentially, um, as they try to try out for the WWE. It was filmed last year around, around this time, around WrestleMania season, mm -hmm. um, and then it released this year around WrestleMania season. But I thought it was really cool. Um just seeing like what it takes to be a WWE superstar. Um, I think they did it really well. John Cena produced it. it. It's on the Roku channel. So 
it's free to watch. But oh. I, I really liked how they like kind of presented it to just the general audience or, you know, somebody who may be familiar with wrestling but haven't watched it in a while. Um, but it was cool. It was like eight episodes and you really get to see just a bunch of different characters and what their experience is like going through yeah. the tryouts. And it's a it's a Roku original? Mm-hmm. It's a Roku oh. original. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I also have been watching the latest season of Survivor. Um, I really don't have that much to say about Survivor. <laughs> it's like this season of Survivor has been kind of up and down. Like these last two episodes have been really good. But, you know, people are calling it like this new new Survivor where, like, so in the past, Survivor mm -hmm. did a lot of, like, it seemed like their casting was, we need to cast somebody to be the villain, for example. And now it seems like they just kind of cast people based mm -hmm. off of, like, their story. And so mm -hmm. sometimes that gets a little, a little much, you know, everybody has a story that they have to overcome. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I'm happy that y'all are here. Happy that y'all overcome those things. Happy that you got this opportunity to make some money. Mm -hmm. But like, let's, this is a competition show. Like, let's get to the gameplay. Like, let's go in. Let's get um, to the business. Let's get to the business, you know? Uh, and then I've also been watching season two of Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. Um, the crew is back together again, living together for the summer. Or I think they lived together for like two weeks and it's just been a lot of drama already <laughs> out the gate. Somebody crying on every episode, oh, every no. dinner, it's a fight. And I'm just like, are y'all really friends? Because I ain't never fought with my friends this much. Dang. But yeah, that's all I've pretty much been watching. And then, you know, the circle dropped today. So yes. I'm going to have yes. to tap into that um, when we're done. Got to. It is a must. I am ready for it. It's been too long. I love Love is Blind. It's cool. It's cool. But Circle just is just hit the sweet spot, man. Mm -hmm. It just I, I, I'm spot. excited to see like how they have made this season, you know, fresh. Well, you know, the only the main thing that's been trippy out is this whole they had in the AI. Mm hmm So I'm interested to see how the AI is gonna be affecting things and stuff like that, which I do feel like it's a it's a relevant take on that. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, and this is cool. going to be my first season watching live, so I'm excited. Oh yeah, that is right. That yeah. is right. I binged all the other seasons. So. Hey, I'm glad I put you on something good. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So what you been watching? Uh, so uh, I've been so in the light of X Men '97 out. I went on and I've been binging. Uh, trying to finish up X-Men 96, um, which that's pretty much the original uh, X-Men cartoon that came out um, a while back when I was a kid. And so uh, I remember watching it. I don't know if I ever technically finished it when I was a kid. I mean, I had VHS tapes and all that stuff like that or whatever. And, you know, this is before streaming and all this stuff like that. So if you didn't catch it on TV or unless you bought it later, you just missed out. And so right now, finishing up bad, I think it's five seasons and I'm close to season four. Um, so I want to finish that before I end up watching the recent one. But a lot of people have been talking about it uh, online and it seems like, you know, something that happened in the middle of this season. I don't know how many episodes it's going to be. It seemed like it really shook up some viewers in a, you know, major way. But like basically they really locked in and loving it. So um, so basically I'm all into X-Men right now, which... X-Men is like my favorite storyline when it comes to anything Marvel. Uh, Rock the Block. Uh, we just finished up the, la the latest season on that. the HGTV original series and basically well-known uh, personalities from different uh, TV shows um, come together and they give them a blank canvas of homes or townhomes or condos. Uh, and they have a few weeks to get it done. And basically they have a I think it's a week per area. I think that's how they do it. So it may be the kitchen and the living room. It may be uh, for one episode. The other episode may be the bathroom and the uh, main suite. Uh, I mean, the bedroom um, and the bathroom suite. And so 
Um, so it's pretty cool. So this one, they was in Florida and they kind of had like, I guess like big, big condos or town. I want to say condos, I want to say, but it's like three, four. So they, it's really huge. So, uh, so it was pretty cool. They recently ended. Um, the Greatest Night in Pop, I watched that a while back. This basically tells a story of um, when Lionel Richie, along with others, uh, but specifically him, led um, the organizing of producing We Are the World song. Uh, that okay. A lot of well-known individuals came together in, in song. It's, it's a Netflix original, and it's actually good. Um, as always, I feel like being able to see Michael Jackson in rare form, especially before the bad album um, and stuff like that is, is pretty dope to see. So uh, apparently he was actually, he actually worked with a lot of Richie to write it out. Um, oh, so cool. you actually get to see, see it. And, and the thing that was dope <laughs> is they produced it after the American music awards. I believe it was at the award ceremony and literally was hoping that all of the people they invited would come out after the award ceremony. Heck so they, no, I would have went to the party. We turning up ladies, after the awards. What do you mean? Go to ladies, work? I think if I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong. They started at nine p.m. They started at eleven at eleven p.m. Wow. And, I, I, and I, it was for charity, though, right? It was for charity, you know. Yeah. But it was like I ain't gonna say last minute, but it was just like a big hope of just getting everybody to buy in because nobody knew that this was the first time, you know, something like this big had ever been done. So, mm -hmm. and they these were major artists. Back. Hey, like this was like, well, you know, they tried with Disney. You remember that with Orlando? Yeah. Uh, Brown and. Uh, yeah. When I did. Um, oh, uh, Circle. Circle, Circle of Life. Life. Yes. And I did another one too. Yeah. But yeah, they, uh, they tried with Disney, which I mean, it was a cute little yeah thing. it was cute at the time it was cool so uh but yeah like they started at 11 and this is like diana ross michael jackson uh that's one of them situations where you got to be like who are gonna be there yes oh Michael's but think about it, these are like <laughs> but th and that's what i'm saying these are the who who's gonna be there they were there so these yeah. are like all big time personalities all literally crammed in one space yeah, trying to make probably, it like man that's how they got people there because they was like who gonna be there and man. all you gotta do is say michael jackson and people are gonna pull up of course i'm about to have of course i'm gonna take like advantage of the opportunity to be on the phone with michael jackson well well this is the thing though i feel like they would but again this is after off the wall mm -hmm. so this is before the bad album so yeah he was big but i don't know i don't know where he was at with this it depends. Of course, he was big or whatever, but it's just like it's so many other individuals that was there. There, like uh, Ray Charles was there, Stevie Wonder was there. So you had people like that's lit. I think Mick Jagger. I think may have been there. I think like it was. It was wild. Like <laughs> it, it. I really was want big. them. I really want like, and maybe it has happened, and I, I just can't remember or think of one like something like that for actors. You know, mm. somebody just to write this insane movie and all these big time actors just yeah. be popping in. And it's like, what? What? Yeah. What? Like, they don't even release the cast list. We just, you got to show, look at the movie and you like, oh my gosh. Oh, 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 oh. You know, I feel like that was really a hot thing to do, like back when they was doing like Valentine's Day. I always mm -hmm. remember that. That was pretty good. Valentine's Day, um, New Year's um, Eve, yeah. Yeah, I didn't watch New Year's Eve. I didn't hear much about that one, but I know I watched good. Valentine's Day. I know, I think I saw part of it randomly on TV, but I think it was like Anchor Man or, or something like that with Will Ferrell one or two. And I think it was mm -hmm. like a lot of random people in it at Cameo. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, I mean, I, def I definitely think we're overdue for one. I think it mm -hmm. definitely used to be really hot. But, you know, it, it's just, I feel like it's just very unique times uh, as far as like trying to just make that work and, and of course, afford it too. But yeah. I feel like that's where comedy is, mm -hmm. you know, really, really be great to get people like that doing things that you wouldn't ever, like, just think about if, you know, you got Denzel to just do something like extremely goofy, like a, a goofy teacher or something like that. Like, that'll be dope, you know, so. Not related, but also related. So, <laughs> like, what, two weeks ago, it was WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. And in the main event on night two, they had John Cena. They had 
Undertaker, they had The Rock, they had all these people coming out. It was like the Avengers and stuff. So like That's what somebody actors, was saying. we yeah. need this. <laughs> yes, yes, we need it, man. Um, but yeah, so definitely highly recommend to check that out. Check out good old Freak Nick How on Hulu. Uh it was good. It was good. Um it tripped me out. Like, have you watched it yet? <laughs> I haven't watched it yet. Okay, so I ain't gonna spoil it, but it's something when you find out about the how it started, you're gonna be like, What? Really? I think I know how it started. Like it was like a like a picnic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what it started off as. And just and so, then it got hello. <laughs> and then Uncle Luke was like, Hey, hey, mm -hmm. let's turn it up. Let's turn it up. You know, so like, mm -hmm. you know, but it was pretty cool, man. Just kind of seeing, just learning more about it. I've heard the phrase before and all this stuff like that, but never really known truly about it. Um, so just very cool to learn about it. Um, it's, like it's funny um, hearing the Gen Zs talk about it because they are so clueless about like who was the time, the um, generation that was involved. And I'm like, yeah. we were, we're millennials. We're not there, y'all. No, no. <laughs> we were either babies. Or we got made at Freak Me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you got some Freak Nick babies out there. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, but yeah, most definitely. We didn't know nothing about it. I remember hearing names. I, I mean, I remember hearing the phrase, but as far as like the context of it, I didn't know too much about it. But, you know, it definitely, it definitely lives up to the name that, you know, mm -hmm. it kind of comes off as, but you actually get to figure out why it was actually initially called that. Mm -hmm. before so but but yeah but um really good it's like, on hulu i feel yeah. like freak Meek is the original um what is it project x party x oh i can see that i can see that <laughs> i mean basically i mean that's why they started because they knew that some people couldn't afford it mainly out of the like uh atlanta area when it comes to like the colleges and stuff like that that Mm -hmm. That scene, you know, a lot of them couldn't afford to get to some of the places that um, other people are usually going to, especially beach and stuff like that, or they wasn't as welcome to be there. So they created their yeah. own thing. So, you know, definitely. Um, then got You're into Quiet on Set. Yeah, got into Quiet on Set, which I mentioned earlier, and stuff on uh, ID slash Max. You can watch it Max. on Max. Mm -hmm. And then uh, definitely been watching the Coach Prime series off and on. How is that? I like it. I finished the first season two or three weeks ago, and now I'm in the second season. But I've only watched an uh, episode and a half or mm -hmm. two episodes. And so okay. basically at the end of it, you find out that he's getting ready to go to Buff uh Buffalo <laughs> to go to Colorado and stuff like that and how that transition looks and players that's considering going with him, all this stuff like that. Um the only thing I do wish, unless I missed it, I wish some of the players that were seniors wait when it was his last season se season, knowing what their decisions was or what happened to them after. I unless I missed it, I don't think they did that. But overall, like I, I definitely you know recommend it. is is very well produced. Um, okay. You kind of get to see more of his family dynamic, especially he with his children, um, and all that stuff like that. But then also with this one, it's starting out more so a mix of his transition, but then also his health. You get to learn more about because I ain't really I've never really known much about his whole uh, physical situation with his leg and everything. And so mm -hmm. it really hits home on, you know, explaining what he's been dealing with with his leg and stuff like that. So have really... you been watching it on um on Prime? Yeah, yeah, it's on Prime. Okay. It's yeah, Prime. I see it on Prime sometimes, but I, I know that there's like do it does Prime have all the seasons? Yeah, yeah, it's only okay. two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's only two. Um very easy watch. I, I feel like the way they produce it, you can be eating, sitting on your phone, or say you're working on something, but you want you just want to listen in the background. Like it's one of those things where it's just easy to consume, but very well produced. Um, and it's just really cool insight to just kind of learn about his experience and stuff like that. Yeah. And and what I really do appreciate, even though you know it's kind of known some of the other drama and stuff like that he's dealt with uh, at the previous institution, I'm glad that they don't own own that. It's more so 
staying on the field and yeah. him and his players and stuff like that or whatever. Cause you know, I, I really would have hated for this to be out and it basically just kind of put the school in a bad light and, and that wouldn't go away. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I'm glad that it just more so focuses on him, his decision to uh, lead, uh, lead the, uh, you know, the football players at the time, what he did. Uh, Cause one cool thing, it pops off, man. Like this, there's spring training leading mm -hmm. up into that last season. Like the rock came out there with the league and they was doing yeah. like, you know, that was, I was like, wow, you know, so. Right. That's yeah. what made me pay attention to, to yeah. him. Cause I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Yeah, Maybe like up till two o'clock in the morning, check oh, checking the score for a game and stuff like. Oh, I don't man, even know like, who the team is, but I, I I was invested. Right, I need him to try to see if they can adjust them times, man, because a, a brother be sleeping, you know. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, man, I mean, it kind of goes back to what you said about you know people who are blessed and put in situations that they don't feel like they're at a moment in life that they need a lot of help to be help to others. And man, like what he's done at his position is just, I really love it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, you know, cause nobody wants to brag, you know, and stuff like that about they, what they've done, but what he's doing with his role, that shows how you can serve and give and give in a major way without, uh, in in a unique way, as long as you have support around you to do those type of things. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, like he he does, he does he does really he, he, the series is really good. I highly recommend. Uh, another sports, I guess I watched more than I realized. Blaze, another sports yeah. project <laughs> that I watched was uh Bye Bye Barry. It's about Barry Sanders, uh, the legendary uh, running back that played for Detroit um, Lions, and I remember the name but i i've never known like a whole bunch about him um mm -hmm. but i highly recommend the series it has kind of like a the vibe of it kind of gives you uh the last dance vibes is the way they produced it and stuff like that um but i but the main thing that it, it circles around is the fact that he randomly ended up retiring uh from the league and barely anybody knew why and it's always been a tripped out thing because like people were so angry, like um because he faxed in his resignation letter. <laughs> he he went to another country, I think it was Paris, France, or something like that, put in, I think, or in England somewhere, faxed in his resignation letter, and then that was it. And he never did explain himself publicly besides that so i mean that is that's a way to use a fax machine <laughs> look you know so but uh it's really good um uh at the end you know he's not sitting around spending time with his sons and stuff like that too so that's a really cool moment but it's it's really good really good watch that's on prime as well and lastly believe it or not i've been watching breaking bad mm -hmm. um i told one of my students my student leaders that i want to try to get into it which I highly doubt it. he's been hold, upholding his side of the bargain. I can't remember what series it was that I say he had to watch too, but basically I have started uh, Breaking Bad. It's good. I will say unless it turns into something else differently, it's not what you think. Um, I know uh, when it comes to like his involvement with the school and stuff like that, it's definitely something different. And, um, you know, it's cool to watch a show like this where you can tell it was produced a few years back when they, the style of the way you film things, cinematically, stuff like that was a tad bit different. It kind of gives you, um, uh, what's that, um, supernatural and like um, Grey's Anatomy type vibes and stuff like that. But, uh, but it's good. Just finished the first season not too long ago. Pretty, I want to say to a certain point, it's kind of easy to follow. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, I, I will say that I can't see it branching out to become very complex, uh, and stuff like that. And just because of the main thing that's hovering over the main character, I feel like that's the only, that's the main thing that keeps me wanting to watch to see what happens. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, but, but other than that, oh, I, I've never seen the show, but I know how it ends for him. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I guess no, no spoiler for me. I'm going to spoil it for you. Yeah. But, uh. <laughs> But yeah, so um, definitely looking forward to seeing 
uh, how it keeps on going. So, but that blaze is my watch list. Um, yeah. yeah Just it shows, sounds like you're very, very sport driven. <laughs> very sport driven. Definitely people. They, I guess the only fictional thing I did watch is Breaking Bad and X-Men. <laughs> so it kind of shows I've been, you know, rolling these days and stuff. But I'm trying to get back into movies and series and stuff like that. Um, still um, got some more things that I want to watch. So it's just just that time of the year. So, But anyway, one thing that we both were able to see recently was A24's Civil, Civil War, um, Civil which War. takes place in, I don't know what year. Did you, did you catch a year? I did not catch a year. I don't know if it actually gives a year. It's definitely one of those films that just happens and you just yeah. gotta go, go along it, with whatever with it, that goes Yeah, I feel with. like they just kind of create a scenario and they're like, here. Yes. Don't ask us no question. Yes. Here it is. Yes. Like, does this take place in 2023? Yes. Right, right. Maybe it does. 2025. You know? Yes. <laughs> it just takes yeah. place. That's all we know. Yeah, because I think I had read that it was supposed to be futuristic, but I didn't see too many things that could they gave off futuristic. I mean, it's future. Mm -hmm. If anything, I can see it being 20, 2028 max mm -hmm. uh, or whatever like that. Maybe 2030, but definitely not too far in the future and stuff like that. But I can see how in the sense of where it goes, how things have to slowly develop to get to that point. Mm -hmm. But Blaze, um, what were your initial thoughts getting ready to go in? <laughs> I'm going to be honest this. with you, Corey. I'm going to be honest with you. When you sent me the link, it was like, yeah, Civil War is coming out. I yeah. Was like, First of all, what are you talking about? And so you sent me the trailer and I was like, I do not want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> I was not excited at all because I was just like, what the heck is this movie about? Texas <laughs> and California. I was like, this is ridiculous. And I was like, this A24. So I know the movie is going to be ridiculous. Um, <laughs> But, like, within maybe the first five, ten minutes of the movie, I was like, oh, this is different than what the trailer is. And so yes. <laughs> I was open and I was locked in the whole, yeah. whole, whole time. So I was happy that the movie was nothing like the trailer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, the same. Um, I was kind of nervous at first because, I guess because of the theater that we went to, it wasn't that many trailers because by the time we sat down, uh, we're seeing uh, Kirsten Dunst. I forgot her name in the film, but she's Lee. taking pi Lee. She's taking pictures of the people on the street. That's what we come mm -hmm. walk in and sit down on. But one of my students told me it was like, yeah, like you literally didn't miss much. It literally something had just happened right before the end and then right there. And I was like, okay, cool. But um, but yeah, like I, I was I was expecting the intensity of it but i wasn't mm -hmm. expecting how intense it was going to be mm -hmm. along probably, with probably like most people thought it was going to be intense because of the war aspect and yeah. the focus of the movie is not really about the civil war that's going on yeah like i didn't i didn't think it would be as personable i think it, i thought it was going to be more of like the experience of watching uh Independence Day, like there were just people within the craziness that's going on and how these people are reacting to this. I did not expect it to be heavily like, no, the we are following um journalists who are going around capturing different uh moments of this war that's mm -hmm. been created in America. Uh and uh and and that's what the motivation of all of this is going to be about like i literally thought we was going to learn more about the series i mean more about the what's war, truly yeah. going on but it truly was Me about too. it more was about no you're following them and wherever they go that's the experience you're going to get mm -hmm. you, you don't get the luxury of finding out um why is this happening what it's about all that's mm -hmm. affected because that didn't matter yeah. what mattered was what is their life like? What is their experience yeah. as a photojournalist about? It doesn't really matter what the war is for most photojournalists. 
this is their this is probably close to their experience. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that's a really good point, you know, because, I mean, going back to Lee's experience with her uh, being, you know, showing clips of her in different other war settings and her capturing the photos that she did and just kind of, I guess, in a sense, separating her morals and her her being at that moment to just be like, I'm taking a picture of this person on fire or I'm taking mm -hmm. a picture of people getting shot and killed or these people that are struggling because I'm capturing Gotta shut them humanity off. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it just it's capture that. And and so like that that was something that I found a very unique way to tell the story. But I feel like, you know, why not tell it that way? I do wish well we'll get to that in a second. We're gonna talk about what our wishes were when it came to the film. Um mm -hmm. but overall like what like what was your like what was your experience like as far as traveling from okay this big thing happened at the beginning we're going to that night like what is your mind thinking about at that time as far as like the girl coming into play and then they're getting ready to go on this journey like what what was coming to mind oh i knew the girl from was a problem <laughs> i knew she was a problem i i knew it like when she showed up at the hotel and she was like, I know this is stalkery. Yes, it is. Why are you here? Thanks for bringing this back, but don't just show up to my hotel. And then when she didn't leave and she like went inside, I was like, mm. then she, the next morning, she in the car. No, no. I knew she was going to be a problem. I knew that she was going to be like the demise of um, Lee. Yeah. But as much as I was irritated by her, like we needed her in the story, you know, to progress the story of the movie because she, yeah. she is like a aspiring journalist. And so instead of us just maybe watching Lee, who's an experienced journalist, we get to watch sure. somebody who wants to do this, really learn what it's like to to do this and how hard it can be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most definitely I... I was really loving the dynamic between her and Lee um, and just how that was going to work. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate the element of like different uh, personalities all in one car. I had it work, but all of them are very stern. And you can tell that personally, even though they're photojournalists, they have in some type of way been affected by the war um, and just mm -hmm. trying to figure out like how that, you know, how they're navigating with that on a, a, a mental level and, and, and pushing through. I yeah. do feel like that was that was a pretty cool experience to go through, and so, yeah. um, and not just yeah. the war, but also mm -hmm. just their their experience in that job as a whole. Like thinking True. about the um the guy, or what was his name, Joel. Mm -hmm. Like he was, he drank the, you know, it's like he drinks a lot, he smokes a lot, and stuff yeah. like that's kind of how you can tell he was coping with. True. With the job um yeah yeah their mentor smitty you know he's so i don't want to use the word addicted but I, but you know i can't think of anything else he was so just like addicted or faithful to the job that he was he was put himself in like a dangerous situation because yeah his mindset is you got to get the story you got to get the story true true and so th seeing that dynamic from all of them how they cope with their job what their yeah. drive is and just what it has done to them over the years was, was interesting. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Uh, that, that is a good point because it's like all of them, even though they work well together and all this stuff like that, it definitely comes off as if um, all of them were there for different reasons, even mm -hmm. though it, all of these things, even though they were doing the same type of job and feeding into the same platform or medium, they all like it fulfilled them in different ways in a sense and stuff like that because it almost seemed like um uh what was the older gentleman's name? What was Smitty. Name? Yeah, like it seems like he was there because it, it almost gave me a sense of like, do you feel like you have nothing else left in life mm -hmm. uh to move on for? You know what I'm saying? And so so with that in in the aspect to be able to have to deal with that and stuff, um that that definitely is, you know, a good point. Uh, Blaze, like, um, what, like, what, what scenes do you feel like or moments really stood out to you when it came to like, man, I really 
am enjoying the way that they're presenting this moment and helping me escape. Like, what were some some moments that really was like, like, man, like this they this is different. This is different from what I possibly have seen before. Mm -hmm. Um, so things that come to my mind first, the scene where they are following those group of guys um that are shooting, I think at the military, maybe. Mm -hmm. And Jesse captures a picture of the black guy being yeah. shot. And so in like yeah. each, each frame of a picture, you see the moment he got shot, when he realized he was shot going down, they're pulling him like that mm -hmm. was so it was it just like it, it was kind of like a speechless almost watching yeah. that because I'm like, yeah. wow. They're really capturing this this moment. But this mm -hmm. moment tells a story of like with this civil war, what's going on with it. Yes. So I thought that was cool, but also it was kind of foreshadowing, you know, the end when she mm -hmm. captures Lee's death. Mm -hmm. And then the other moment that stood out to me was um, what kind of American are you? Man, Man that scene. That I scene. was like, oh, I'm on the edge my of my gosh. seat. Like, how do how do we get out of this situation? Uh, I was like, oh, this is this is terrifying. <laughs> this is this is this that part right there made the movie feel like yeah. a horror film. Yes. But it, it also makes you think like these journalists, they go into these war situations and they're there just to kind of capture the experience. But you got to think the other side don't care. Yes. You know, whoever is on the other side of, true. of them, they don't care. And so they right. are literally putting themselves at risk to be storytellers and to capture these moments yes. so that we can see it. And, you know, Lee says something about how she feels like her pictures are a lesson. People should be able to see her mm -hmm. pictures and, and, learn from those mistakes and it's like she's literally putting herself and all of them are putting themselves at risk just to tell us something but the the crazy thing about it is like if we want to be honest we don't learn from those things like no not at all because if we did we wouldn't have wars you know if we are seeing all these pictures of people who are casualties of war and that are dying why aren't we learning from these things? Exactly. Exactly. You know, which it tells a lot with, you know, not to get all into that now, but what's going on now, <laughs> you know? And so it's mm -hmm. like, um, but I mean, you're, you're definitely right. You know, it, that, that scene right there, I feel like made the film. I feel like. Yeah. If it was like them writing that, producing that, the acting in that, like that, to me was on a totally different level. And I'm like, well, what is about to happen? Mm -hmm. Cause I really feel like anybody could catch one right now. Anybody. I was like, they all finna die. And I'm like, no, like, <laughs> <laughs> like stop, stop. <laughs> we American. What you mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and even within that, that was what confusing. Type of American do you need me to be? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like, you know, where are you from? Where are you from? That's what exactly. I'm saying. Like exactly, American. So, so what? I'm like, man, what? Whatever this man needs y'all to say, I need y'all to say. It. I need y'all right. to say. It. I mean, if if that one guy, if Joe, oh, didn't say he was from Florida, I think he was gonna get shot because he said oh, yeah. Central America, and he was like, what type of Central America? Florida. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. The, the, you needed to actually be from America for that man. Oh, but man. Ooh, another scene too that stood out to me. Another scene that stood out when they was at the gas station, and she went and she looked oh. at the two guys that were um, being hung up, and yeah. Lee was like, "Hey, let me get your picture with them." And this man really stood there to get his picture taken. I'm like, "This is wow! Like you realize you really like I know it's a war going on, but th this is a crime." <laughs> yeah. And you posted up with your gun, like you cool. Like that was shocking. <laughs> yes. Most definitely. I think the other thing it's that scary. I uh, very scary. And one thing that I realized that basically kind of slowly unfolded that basically we didn't realize that they the journalist was on somebody's side from the jump. 
Right. I feel like that was something that was very clever that they did mm -hmm. um, in order to get this across. But they were on a side, which I think in my head, it was still hard for me to understand like whose side was on what, because apparently there are other areas going on in America. Mm -hmm. Are they also fighting the same war, you know, and they just got to it I first? I took it as they were trying to be as neutral as possible to to get the story and but they for like their protection they would link up with whoever they could so that they can follow like I, I i wish that there was a scene like you know when they um they found out those people that were sh shooting at the military people um i wish they showed a scene of them meeting those people and being like hey can we document this shootout, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, most definitely. Because I did, I mean, you know, I don't know. It was just very unique, especially like with the whole sniper situation. It's just like, you know, being in that moment and me wanting to know, okay, who was the person that was such a sharp shooter that was making it hard for anybody to cross this, yeah. like in a freaking car, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, so yeah, I mean, it was very, it was very unique to see them kind of like, you know, flow through this process of get capturing all this and getting to DC and everything like that, you know, but, you know, um, I will say even going back to, you know, the, the horrifying, you know, scene as we call it and stuff like that is when they were saved. Like, I feel like that was one mm -hmm. of the most dopest non corny ways to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that, because I just I, like I'm glad he went out there with them, and then I also wonder how that would have went too. You know what I'm saying? And um, but it was just very unique to see like how the different dynamics across the country, and then also them being in certain town, certain towns or mm -hmm. yeah, or like states, I guess, town. or whatever. Yeah, that was very chill. But then also, it's just like, but if you look up, it's like you still got some Big watchers out there. Always watching. Yeah. Yeah, you know. So, um, it was just it it was very unique, you know. So, here here's the thing though that I want to know your opinion on. Mm -hmm. Wait, you did feel... you have any other scenes that you that stood out to you besides that one, man? Honestly, I would say I would say the dynamic of them uh, finding that base mm -hmm. um, of everybody there, like you know, between that and I will say going back to what you said when they was with the, when they found that first group that was uh, shooting at each other and stuff like that, you know, it was it was more so the sound effects and, and the sound of the film, like it was very mm -hmm. real, like. The guns yeah. were very harsh whenever they went off. It felt like um, a real document. Yeah. yeah, like it it was it was very unique to to see that. Um <clears throat> but outside of that, I really couldn't it really wasn't so much more because that one episode, I mean that one scene was just really that that was a really strong scene. Like I, I feel yeah. that that's what took the film up a notch to the level to where I could see it being nominated for something. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this movie should be nominated. Kristen Dunn should win an award. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and the guy who played the military person or whatever that was asking. Oh, Joel. Um, I mean not Joel. Um, Jesse Plumman. Yeah. Yeah. He he good. he did that. It was only a few few minutes, but he played. Right. Movie. He was. It was five minutes. And he and he made wow, an impact. A huge one. Um, but I want to put, I want to know, do you feel like Lee was set up before they left? Say that one more time. I want to know if basically you think Lee was already, was set up to get killed at the end. Set up by who? Uh, old girl and, his, and her friend, her partner. No. You don't think so? I don't think she was set up to be killed. I think that 
there was a moment right before she died where like Jesse was trying so hard to be like Lee and get the shots that Lee was getting. Mm -hmm. Like you would see they would flash, but they would show Lee getting a picture and then they would go to Jesse and she would try to kind of like mimic her. And yeah. it was a scene where, and actually before that, like the military lady, the black lady that was in the military had the, they, they, they kept on having to pull Jesse out the way. Yeah. You know, because she didn't know what she was doing. She was just trying to be like Lee. But there was a moment where the camera was on Joel and he was looking at Jesse kind of mimicking Lee. And it was kind of like he, I took it as he was like, she finna get, she finna get herself killed or she finna get one of us killed type of thing. The, mm. the look on his face. And then right after that happened, she ran into the middle just like um, Lee did. And then Lee goes out there to save her. And so it was kind of like a, he knew that that was about to happen and it was nothing he can do. I didn't take it as they were setting her up. Well, the reason why I feel that it was a setup was because of Joel. The way Joel reacted with when Sam got killed versus when Lee was shot shot down and all he literally did was grab Jesse by the shoulder for a little bit as if he just checking in on her and kept walking with no emotion at all aware of like that. And even when it came to them trying to get into the house, how he's just kind of pulling Lee along, it's almost like he found Joy and Jesse basically going from like, I don't know what I'm doing to like, I'm the aggressor, aggressive so much that you got to get pulled out of the way to where I'm almost willing to follow her than to keep on following Lee. But it got to a point to where he had to kind of wake and get Lee to check back in. But also, it's, it's one of those things of, like, the guy uh, who was his friend that was riding with the other guy, whatever, even said that he was flirting or something like that with Jesse that night at the uh, hotel. Mm -hmm. And he kind of just brushed that off aware of like that, and that was never even brought up. And, you know, at first, when he was sitting down with her at the back of the truck, I was kind of thinking, like, this don't seem like a big brother or a father figure talking to... Oh, no, he was definitely flirting with her. You know, it was kind of like a passive, I'm not trying to be too aggressive, mm -hmm. but yeah. hey, just letting you know, if you ever get any ideas, just know that I, I can be more than just a companion. You know what I'm saying? And But a very, very, very slick kind of way. And yeah. I just feel that how and also why the first thing that Jesse does when she get ready to fall down again say she immediately pulls out a camera to take a picture of her again shot. Yeah, I I hear you, but I just don't see it that way because I felt like when Joel was put pulling Lee, um, it was more of like a big brother thing. Like he noticed mm -hmm. that she was having a tough time, right. but he couldn't just leave her there because if he left right. her there, she probably would have just got shot. So he was pulling her along to essentially keep her safe. And I think he knew that if, as long as he kept pulling her along, like she would eventually snap out of it and get herself together, which she did. And that's how they knew, oh, the president is still in the house. Like that was her, that was all her. Um, you said something else that I wanted to come in on before I talk about the last thing you said. Flirting at the hotel. Um, or grabbing grabbing Jesse's shoulder before he walked on. Oh, okay. Yeah, that. So you you were comparing his his reaction to the different devs. I hear you, but also it's a very different situation. When Smitty died, that was in a situation that was completely I don't know if unpreventable was like it was just a dangerous situation that they had no way out of, but there was also space to grieve. When Lee died, they were in the middle of quote unquote a mission. And so there wasn't that space to grieve. It was more like, come on, let's keep going because we don't know if there's more shooters around the corner. Plus, 
the president, I'm trying to get the president before they kill him. And so he was kind of just, you know, working, working, working. We don't know what happened when the thing went off. He could have definitely grieved the same way he did with um, Smitty. So I don't see that comparison just because it was two different yeah. situations. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing that you had said that now I forgot. <laughs> Uh, um. Oh, about the part when Jesse was, she already had her camera out and she was already taking pictures. Um, I just thought it was dumb that she didn't get her butt up, but she had already had her cameras out, her camera out, and she was taking pictures and thinking just like from a, a um photographer perspective, like it made sense for her to still take pictures because that that was such a moment of like Lee being there saving her. I don't think in her, cause the way their job works is that they just kind of capture things as they're happening. And sometimes not really think about that. And that was Jesse's problem. She didn't think about her safety. She was just like trying to capture moments. And I feel like that's something that she would have to learn over time. Like Lee was able to capture a moment and then get herself safe, capture a moment, get herself safe. And I think Jesse saw a moment, took that picture, and once she like got the um shot, like once Lee died, like that's when she realized this girl just got shot and died. And that's when, you know, dude mm -hmm. came and pulled her along. Well, I think he they left her there. And that's when Yeah. Yeah, they left I, her there. They left yeah, her there. Yeah. They left um Lee there. But like that's also the moment where we see a true, true change in Jesse where she kind of has to lose that humanity to do this job in the same way that Lee has kind of lost her humanity mm -hmm. to do the job. Yeah. Yeah. And and like, and I definitely, you know, understand your perspective. I just, the way I read them, I just really feel that that was intentional. I really do. Because it's just like, she literally said that she wanted to be a war photographer and how, you know, scary she was acting, at least all the way up until she jumped in the car and stuff like that. Like, it's literally as soon as that moment came, like she hit a switch. And I just feel that, like, for her to hit that switch, on top of that, she actually started connecting with Lee and Lee actually showing that she wanted to be a mentor and doing that. I just feel that. Yeah, she had like, for instance, like, yes, yeah, she had a camera out, but like your first instinct, you hurrying up and bringing the camera out after somebody just knocked you down from almost getting shot. Like you should be trying to run, but she knew that she had coverage from Lee and it could be on one end, like you saying, like maybe she wanted to have it out just in case, hey, if this is her moment, then I just got the winning shot of one of the most famous photographers of my time, photojournalist of my time, or, um, you know, that she was just trying to, she didn't, she was just so outside of herself that she didn't realize how much danger she was truly in. But I just feel like when Lee died, like no, like nobody reacted, like she didn't really react to Lee dying as much as just like the body was just gone. And then it's just like, like literally. But, but mm -hmm. think about everybody else too that got like shot around them that was in the military. Nobody reacted to them getting shot. Why? Because they are at war so their their mind is going forward not oh my gosh this person just got shot we don't have time for that right now we got to yeah. keep moving forward to complete the mission and once that mission is done then we can be like oh my gosh lee is dead yeah 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 now when it comes to seeing the mission through yes and it's like i feel like in other films i've seen where hey like like your friend just that's like oh no like you know they and then some somebody, somebody might drag them along or it's just like they look at them for a minute but they know they gotta keep going mm -hmm. but literally joe had no reaction at like he stopped he had a moment to even check on lee and he didn't even do that he checked on jesse and kept walking like so he did pause but it was just like for me and this is why i'm having my perspective but i know it's like we won't really ever know until unless the director <laughs> Or the mm -hmm. writer really say, but it's just like based on that. It's just like that. Uh, almost like did he? The, well, did he transform? Also, did he get to the point? Just like oh well, just you good? Okay, cool. Let me bounce. You know what I'm saying? Unless he trans, 
unless he was ready to transform even more to that moment, become so desperate to get that uh, quote that he really wanted to get before he, he was get the president was going to get killed. I just, I just feel that like either there was no love lost with Lee end up dying that she was going to end up dying or whatever, or, mm -hmm. and he has something on the low with Jesse um, or whatever like that, or, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just something more of there. And I wish, and I think that kind of goes to my wish list, which I think is almost close to that time. But, <laughs> but that's, that's why I think there was more to that. Um, because why not he help her set up to get the, one of the best photos of all time that helped make her famous, because that's exactly what that photo is going to do, uh, of, of Lee getting killed, you know, um, and I don't yeah, think he I don't cared know. about Jesse enough to do that. <laughs> I mean, he he cared enough to be flirting with her because you know he's gonna come back. I mean, that's just flirting, no? Like he ain't gonna let his partner, somebody that he's known for years, just die. Like I don't think it's is that that deep for him <laughs> with Jesse. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I feel like it was something there, but I don't know. I may be a hundred percent wrong, but I'm definitely. If y'all listen to this, like. I need y'all to hurry up, comment on the YouTube and let us know what y'all thoughts is. Like, do y'all feel like it was a setup? Like how Joe was feeling? Because I just feel like that's kind of like the coolness of this film is very abstract and it mm -hmm. doesn't give you any context to where it's just like people can have so many different thoughts and POVs on like how it is and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so, so most definitely, um, so before we wrap up with the film, like what is some wish lists about this film as far as things you wish they would have done, uh, things you could have known more about, like what what are some things that you wish? Because I feel like that's an appropriate ask for this type of film. Um, I said I went earlier about like seeing them actually go up to the, that group of people and being like, hey, can we capture you all <laughs> killing people, please? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um. That's really it. Like, I mean, at first I wanted to know why the war broke out, how Texas and California got together. But like in the grand scheme of things, it's after seeing what the movie was about, I honestly don't care. Cause like it it it's it's irrelevant to the actual plot of the movie, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. But I think that's pretty much it in terms of like my wish list. I it gave me everything I needed. <laughs> I mean, it did. Oh, man. I mean, I, what happened at the end? Like, and once yeah. again, that's completely irrelevant to the to the plot. Like, what happened? Like, was the war over? And uh, did Jesse get famous? Like, that probably is more relevant to the to the plot. But um, how did they remember Lee? You know, those are like little things, but. Yeah. I can live I, without them. Yeah. I I can live without my wish list, but I will say in the form of production, I would like to know, I would like a prequel. Mm -hmm. and I would like a part two, just because unlike some countries that these situations happen, we did not know who the leader was. Mm -hmm. And if there's no leader and this is just happening, this just happened, that means that something has to be done to resolve the chaos um, and stuff like that, whether it's leaders and y'all just work with one another or unless it's territories that this end up, like if it's a sense of very, like a unique way, like what did this reverse the country back to where it goes from having a president to going back into territories, you know what I'm saying? To where it's almost kind of like a vibe, like say for instance, you go to Africa, like driving wise, the experience may be similar to like going from state to state, but over there it's like going from country to country yeah. driving. Yeah. And so like, does, does it, does this evolve to where now we go back into territories and like, so say for instance, California and Texas are now their own territorial country or province or whatever like that. Um, I, I just would like to know that in a sense. Um, but I also want a prequel because I just want to know 
based off of what we saw, like a lot had happened by the time the movie had came. And so I want to know what, what was like the end result, what set people off? Like, how do we get to this point and stuff like that? Um, Cause obviously yeah. we saw the president knew that it people was coming from him and it was getting pretty wild. So how does that? And the heck did the president get to three terms? <laughs> it, it, exactly, you know what I'm saying. And getting rid of the FBI, all this stuff like that. Like, how mm. did we get to that point? So, yeah. so yeah. But speaking, since you said that, that that did make me think about one thing that I I have a wish list about. Um, and that instead of uh, them like doing a lot of scenes and stuff because this movie is about photojournalists. I think it would have been dope at the beginning of the movie to tell that story in the form of photos, like how, mm. like when the war started and how it progressed to where they are in the film, that yeah. would have been cool to just kind of like, mm. it just, it'd be silent. And then like a camera flick of all these different images. Yeah, And, it, and then it would have even been doper to just have like, it could be like, Lee's name under those pictures and then mm -hmm. like maybe like a screen grab of an article that Joe and Smitty and you know just different people that we mm -hmm. got to meet in the in mm -hmm. the um yeah. in the film or even like that documentary crew that came when they went to the military base like maybe like a clip from them yes. early on like that would have been really really good and, yes. added. and they probably did it and probably had to cut it because of time but yeah. that would have been cool yeah, like, I mean, it was under two hours, so I wouldn't have been how I did, because like you said, it kept me interested on what's next. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. No, I wouldn't no. mind, like, 15, 20 more minutes. Because yeah. it didn't feel long at all. No. No, and it definitely ended like, okay, that's it. All right. All right, guess I'm going home. So, yeah. um, no, it was, that movie yeah. was really good, and... Yeah. Like, even today, like, still thinking about it, it, like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like that movie, it's, it's staying with me, you know, it's in like the back of my one. mind, it's, it's still <laughs> in my head. Yeah. Yeah. Like, most definitely, like, I'm, I definitely want to look at more interviews, see, you know, the context of thing. I know it kind of be a little while before people talk, talk a little bit more about it when it comes to like actors and stuff like that but i do feel like this is one of those films that was told very well it it reminded me of those late well mid 90s early 2000s films where it's very grounded character driven mm -hmm. you just in the moment kind of like those old sci-fi films mm -hmm. uh especially yeah. like you know independence day stuff like that yeah and i told um, you and my brother this but this was like my favorite a24 movie i could see that I can see that. I still want to see, uh, I forgot the name of it, but about um, Priscilla. Yeah, Priscilla. I still want oh, to yeah, watch Oh, yeah, I want that. to see Priscilla. Yes, I, want I think to watch it's on Priscilla. Max. Yeah, it is. I want to watch Priscilla, and then I want to watch The Whale. But other than that, um, I, I definitely feel you on that one. But I will say this one, based on some of the projects that I have seen, this one, I like the. I don't know. It just get, gives me old school vibes of the way they tell them the stories. It's not so mm -hmm. dun, 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 or like yeah, you know. It's just very abstract, and so um, I, I definitely dig it. So I'm I'm very I'm very interested to see what's going to be next, especially since now most of their projects will now be streamed on uh, HBO Max. So so yeah, yeah. So, but all right, since the blaze, that's all I got. You got anything else for today? Um, the only thing I got is all this like press and pictures and stuff for the new Michael Jackson movie. It's definitely creating buzz, and yes. it looks like it's it's they 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 in their bag with the cast. Oh yeah, Most they in their bag with the cast. And I'm ready for like a teaser trailer or something. I won't lie. When I first heard about the project, I was like another Michael Jackson, but now I'm like. <laughs> The casting is casting, so yeah, I can't yeah. wait. Yeah, that one I'm ready also, for that this one. Gonna be four hours. Uh, they ain't near. <laughs> they ain't near because it look like they're going all the way through the eighties to the possibly yeah. the nineties. So. This is gonna be the first movie where they're gonna have to sell two tickets so you can see one one day and then the other half the next day. Yes, <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. But uh. But yeah, between that one and this untitled or unpublicly titled film by uh, Ryan Coogler, 
uh, with uh, Michael B. Jordan leading it's starting to sound pretty dang good too. So, uh, and this is uh, supposed to be a vampire period piece, I think. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, so we'll see what happens. I feel like some. This may be the, at least the next couple of years, the years of like more original content, which I'm definitely down for. So. So yeah, but other than that, y'all, as always, we really do appreciate appreciate y'all for tuning in. Uh, please make sure that you uh, check out our platforms. About to get ready, ready to be back active in that. We're gonna be checking out uh, the series. Is it Unlocked on Netflix? Is that it? Yeah, mm-hmm. Unlocked, uh, which is uh, it was about like in- a, a prison exper- experiment yeah. that happened here in um, Arkansas and Pulaski yep. County. Yeah, so we'll be watching that. Um, also, I think I really, you know, depending on our time in between then and Demon Slayer, I think I really want us to jump in on uh, Jujutsu Kaisen um, mm-hmm. as well. And of course, we got the Circle too uh, that we begin uh, getting on and stuff like that. But Demon Slayer will probably be the last other big one outside of us getting ready for the summer films that's coming out, especially when it comes to um, the. Uh, the next uh, Deadpool film. So we've got some cool things coming up for you all. So please make sure you tune in. Going to try to be posting now since things are kind of slowing down in higher ed pretty soon on a daily job to post more interactive things. So we'd love for y'all to just let us know where y'all think about things, you know, play with your minds a little bit, see how y'all feeling and stuff like that. But, um, but other than that, y'all have a good rest of the day, night, or morning, and um, hope y'all tune in for the next one. Peace. Peace.